and welcome to Inquire to Choir. My name is Eva and I'm here to help you, fellow choir people. It's the end of the year. I love when people say that like we already didn't know. Last year I had done a video called Eight Lessons I Learned as a Choir Conductor in 2017 and to my surprise it went down really well for this channel that is. So I decided to do it again this year. More so because it was one heck of a year. It was very surprising. It was very different. I actually started working with a new choir. I had to pass the audition for the choir conductor, so that was something that I hadn't done in quite a while. I had to prove myself to a whole new group of people, so it's been a challenge. Therefore, here's a curated list of miscellaneous lessons I learned this year. First, a story. This year, in December, I have had the worst, the worst sound check of my entire life. I'm not even kidding. We had the whole Christmas concert prepared, then we got to the church where it was taking place and everything fell apart. The reason? It's a huge church. Huge! And the echo in there is enormous. I had never encountered an echo that huge before. And while I was aware that when the audience comes, it will become smaller, it was very discouraging both to myself and to the choir. So it's been an experience. How could that happen, you ask? How could I not be prepared for it? Well, usually we have our traditional Christmas concerts in a different church, which is smaller. Still big, but much smaller than this one. And it was actually a last minute thing that the church was changed. Three lessons from this experience are the first one, choose your program based on the acoustics as well the repertoire. This seems very obvious and of course I have always done it so, but I have to admit I was extremely thankful for the fact that I had switched up the repertoire for this concert. Not just because of the church acoustics, which I was aware of, and just to let you know, the choir in question has a repertoire full of popular songs, so it's not a church one. It was because the choir in question is currently going through a transition. A bunch of people are on their way out, which is why I had chosen a more choral sound without many solo parts for the voices. And the general sound effect I was aiming for was ethereal. I'm thankful for it because it would be much, much worse to handle the echo in that church if the program, the repertoire, for the concert was a typical one for that choir. So I'm glad I switched it up a bit because I was aware of the bigger issue, the acoustics and the venue. Lesson number two, large echo, slower tempo. It is a wonderful thing when you realize that every single lesson you ever took in music, no matter what kind, was not in vain. This happened to me this year. This happened to me on that very sound check. I, by vocation, am a pianist. I was trained as a pianist. And the biggest thing we pianists have to endure is the fact that we never perform on our own piano. So we have to adapt every time for the new piano and the new acoustics. I played a lot of Bach, a lot of fugues. And when I heard that awful sound check sound, that everything is getting mixed and none of the lines are being understood, I remembered when my piano professor said to me, sometimes in larger acoustics, you need to take a slower tempo than usual for Bach to be understood. Because otherwise it's all a bunch of white noise. I remembered that in that very moment, that awful moment, of sound check and I could react immediately and make things better. Lesson learned, or should I say remembered. Lesson number three, if you are able to schedule a sound check when you wish, don't do it the same day. I recommend doing it the night before because you need to take the reset button. So I'm a firm believer there should be no extra rehearsals or practice between sound check and the performance unless extremely necessary. It's about the mindset for the performance, but that's a topic for another day. 
just try not to do it the same day. Because, for example, if you have a really bad sound check, you need time to process it. I suppose you're now wondering, how did the concert go? Well, it went really well, because a lot of people came. The, the church was packed, so the echo was much smaller. And it was much easier for everyone, so the concert was a success. Now some lessons about choir directing, choir psychology. Lesson number four. Don't assume the choir wants or doesn't want to do something without asking them. I speak of this because a situation happened where it was a last minute invite to perform, very last minute. It required a lot of repertoire and extra rehearsals. And the choir was already tired because a lot of things were happening at the same time. The choir's leadership, together with myself, we assumed the choir will say they don't want to do it. But we didn't want to decide without asking them. Guess what? They willingly decided to do it, and it was a brilliant experience. The thing is, I never thought they would want to do it. And I'm very grateful that we asked them. And the very reason why we asked them was because of our conscience. Lesson number five, don't assume things about your choir members without asking them. This is about their skills. Another story. In the new choir I started working with this year, I have this great strong alto. I love her. She's very stable, very hardworking. I knew she didn't know how to read music. That's okay, that doesn't bother me. But it took me seven months to realize she doesn't know English. We are not an English-speaking country. Our mother tongue is not English, so it's okay that she doesn't know English, but we are a whole different generation, and my generation knows English, and I assumed that there wasn't even a question. So when we are performing English lyrics, it's a huge undertake for her. She has to put a lot of effort in the field I have never thought about before. It's important to know this because I switched up my way of working with her. I can help her because now I know. Lesson number six, and this is something I say very often, you win some, you lose some. I said it before, I'll say it again. Music is a time-based skill. You can prepare, you can rehearse, you can practice it so much that you perfect everything. And then you come to the performance and I don't think anybody had a perfect performance. The audience, maybe it was a perfect performance, I'm sure, but to the person performing, it's never perfect. There's always that one thing that didn't go perfectly. That's just a fact of life. <laughs> During the whole concert, something is bound to happen. Out of 10 songs, one of them is not going to be great. It's okay. Just because everything doesn't go perfectly doesn't mean it wasn't successful. Lesson number seven, be smart about your choral arrangements. I will not repeat myself about this. I did a video which consists of that part as well. I would link it down below with the exact timing of that section in that video, but I will link it as well here, here. Be sure to check it out. I think it's very important to know that. I, it's something that I learned from experience. Lesson number eight, it's very important to incorporate new choir members the best way possible. Huge, huge lesson this year. You know how it is, I assume. Your choir has its base, an established group of singers, which is good. And every season you audition new people, they join, and for the first period of time, they lean on senior choir members, and they eventually come to their own. That works until a certain point. After a few years, a few seasons like this, you could end up with a whole bunch of not so well accustomed singers when the golden generation leaves. And we all know they will leave. It's the circle of life. How you choose to handle this issue and prevent it, it's on you. But I became aware this year of this possible problem. Maybe I could do a video about this? Let me know down in the comment section. Lesson number nine. It's important to be able to let go of choir members. 
This is connected with the previous lesson. It's very important to me that my choir members don't feel an emotional obligation or the pressure to stay in the choir forever. I don't want them to feel guilty when they decide to leave for whatever reason. I want them to feel free to tell me and to have a proper goodbye without feeling they're letting me or the choir down. Also, it's important for me as the leader of the choir that the choir is able to recover from the loss to adapt quickly. So I try not to put all my eggs in one basket, so to say. For example, I don't base the whole tenor section on one great tenor and six who I'm not paying attention to. I try to raise every tenor to be great, so I don't have the whole section fall apart when the great tenor leaves. Lesson number 10 is more personal and that's combined with the story. Lesson number 10 is look who is talking to you. Uh, this concerns criticism. I got a lot of uh, critiques this year, not criticism, critiques, because I put myself out there and I realized that there are good reviews, there are bad reviews. I can agree with some of them, with some of them I don't, but it's okay. I had to look at the person who was writing the critique, but because sometimes I realize that the person in question has never worked with the choir before or has never done popular music choir before. So it's apples and oranges sometimes. And for the story, I heard a phenomenal story and it's a story about frogs. So a bunch of frogs decided to climb the Eiffel Tower to go to the very, very top thousands of frogs so they start and they go up they go up and they're complaining oh my god it's so tough oh, it's very hard this is very difficult and the higher they go a lot of them fall down because it's hard for frogs to climb the eiffel tower and after a while only one frog a single frog out of the thousands climbs to the top and the news reporters come to her and ask her well, congratulations, how did you do it? All of the other frogs fell down, what kept you going? And they realized the frog in question was deaf. The moral of the story is, is it impossible to do something? Or did somebody just tell you it's impossible to do something? Keep your eyes on the prize. This is the biggest lesson of the year. And that's it. Oh, I have to say something. It's now been two years of Inquire to Choir YouTube channel. And on Christmas Day, we hit the first milestone. And that is 100 subscribers. I'm so very thankful for this because I'm not promoting this channel. Because the point of this channel is for the people who are searching for the solution for their problems. Come here, land on a video and hopefully stay when they see that it's useful for them. I just want to say big thank you. I never even imagined it. It's such a huge number. I know in YouTube it's not a huge number, but when a hundred people who willingly said I subscribe is something amazing to me. If you wish to talk to me, you can go to enquire to choir at gmail.com or you can go to Facebook. When it comes to Instagram, I don't get it. I'm too old for Instagram. I really don't get it. So I don't think I'm going to be there as much. But I'm also on Twitter. The comment section from now on will stay open on every video. I'm looking forward to comments from all around the world. Have a happy, healthy, wonderful, great, awesome new year. I truly believe in 2019. 2018 has been what very good to me and very bad to me. I, yeah, I'm a bit bruised. But it's okay, I will, I will be good. How you say, thank you for the music. Conduct well, conductors. I'll see you next year. Bye.